The film begins with Dr. Nate Samuels and his two children, Meredith and Nora, arrive at a reserve in Africa for vacation. He meets up with his old friend Martin who is the manager of the reserve and like an uncle to the girls. Martin takes the family to the village where Nate grew up in and shows them his home where they will be staying. Inside, the girls see photographs taken by their mother, who also grew up in the area. While the family eats dinner, they get into an argument over Nate's divorce. The girls say he was not there for his former wife when she passed away from cancer after the split. Nate confides in Martin and says he wants to use this trip to reconnect with his daughters. The next day the group heads out to tour the reserved areas of the safari. They see a variety of animals then come across the local lion pride. They watch from a distance and meet a man named Banji who is in charge of tracking the movement of the lions. Martin then approaches the pack who embrace and hug him as they are used to seeing him. However, he notices one of the females is seriously injured in the paw. Martin and the group drive off to a nearby village to see if anyone knows what happened to it. But, when they arrive they find that the entire community has been killed somehow. Nate asks Martin what could have done this, and he states the only option is a lion but lions don't kill like this. They race back to the car and Martin tries to radio for Banji but he does not answer. As they drive, they find an injured man from the village. They try to help him but Martin hears rustling in the bushes and goes into them with his gun. As he tracks the killer lion, Nate performs CPR on the man but he does not survive. Martin nears a pond of water and notices some large footprints. He walks into the water with his gun aimed and suddenly hears something behind him. He turns and fires his gun once. Nate hears the shot and calls out for Martin, then ventures into the brush to look for him. As he walks, he sees something and instantly turns and sprints back to the car screaming get inside now. As he runs a lion chases after him, growling. He makes it to the car and slams the door and the lion jumps at the glass, shattering it. The girls scream and it jumps on top of the car, drooling and staring at them below. It goes quiet for a second, then reaches through an open window and grabs Nate's foot. Meredith takes the wheel and hits the gas, and Nate manages to kick the lion in the head and knock it off of him. They crash into a tree and Nate tries to calm his daughters down. He tries to start the car but it does not work. Suddenly, they hear Martin on the radio who tells them the lion attacked him and tore up his leg. He says he cannot stand and is losing blood rapidly so he might pass out. Nate tells him to heat his knife and put it on his artery to stop the bleeding, and he screams in pain as he does it. Martin hears the scream and tells him he is going to come for him. However, Martin says to stay in the car because the lion is staring right at him and he thinks he is being used as bait. Inside the car, Nate learns that his leg has also been torn up but is not a deep wound. They find and assemble a tranquilizer gun and Martin says they will only have one chance to hit it. He also warns them the lion has wandered off and says they need to get to high ground. Now armed, Nate exits the car and stands atop it. He scans the area with his scope and Meredith gets out of the car to try and see Martin. Nate screams at her to get inside when Nora looks through her window and discovers the lion on a hill behind them. Nate shoots and misses with his gun, and tries to reload the weapon. He is too slow and the lion jumps and swipes at him with his claws. He falls to the ground and crawls under the car as the lion lunges at him aggressively. It attacks him from both sides and bangs into the car. It turns its back for a split second and Nate grabs the tranquilizer gun but it is unloaded. He hits the lion with the butt of the rifle and Nora is able to reach through the window and stab the lion with a tranquilizer dart. It stumbles and slowly walks away feeling the effects of the sedation. Meanwhile, Meredith couldn't make it back to the car so she ran to Martin. She puts her arm around him and helps him walk back to the vehicle. Inside of it, Nate treats and sanitizes his wound while Martin screams in agony. He eventually passes out and Nate is able to stitch him up. As they talk about their plan, they look outside and see the lion back on the hill as the tranquilizer begins to wear off way sooner than expected. It calmly walks and growls at the car below as the sun begins to set. Now nighttime, they try to radio for help but cannot reach anyone. They ration their water and Martin begins to regain consciousness. He speculates that the lion has gone rogue and is attacking because poachers killed his pride. Later, they are woken up by voices speaking on the radio. As they try to talk back, a car pulls up behind them and a bunch of poachers with guns jump out. Nate tells the girls to stay in the car and he gets out to speak with him telling them he needs help. He says a big lion attacked them, and the poachers reveal Martin was right and they killed his entire pack yesterday. They eventually offer to help Nate if he pays them 5,000 American dollars, which he agrees to. But, as they check the car they discover Martin, who fights against poachers, and they pull out their guns. They state Martin killed three of their men and they hit Nate in the head, knocking him to the ground. The poachers then try to pull the girls out of the car and there is a rustling noise in the woods. Suddenly, the killer lion jumps out and begins to attack. It kills one poacher and the others shoot at it as Nate and his daughters get back into the car. In the chaos, Nate decides to try and steal the poacher's truck while they are fighting. He unlocks the car but the key is missing, so he decides to go look for it as this may be their only chance. As he creeps through the woods he sees the lion lurking nearby and has to destroy his radio to stop it from hearing him. Nate hides in a tree as the lion walks below him. 
Then he hears a hissing noise. There is a black snake in the branch and he quickly snatches it with one hand then drops it on the beast, causing it to move away. With the lion now in the distance, Nate tries to wade through the water to a dead poacher with the key. The lion hears the movement though and jumps above him. But the girls begin to honk the car horn because they are worried Nate has been gone for too long. This gives him the chance to reach the body and steal the keys from the dying poacher. Back at the car, the lion jumps and claws at the window. Nobody moves as it stands on the hood and growls at them. It backs off for a second, then charges through the broken window, attacking Meredith. Martin fights it off and tells the girls to escape because the car is going to tip over. They run out and the car falls off the hill with Martin still fighting inside. The lion is dazed and injured, but walks toward Martin who is bloodied and severely hurt. Gasoline begins to drip from the car and the lion approaches. In a heroic sacrifice, Martin ignites his lighter and blows up himself and the lion to try and buy the family some time. Nate makes it back to the stolen truck and finds Meredith has been attacked. The wound is not fatal though so she will be alright. He then checks the car in the valley and finds a raging fire and realizes Martin did not make it. The family then speeds off in the truck but begin to run out of fuel. They pass the friendly pride of lions they saw earlier then stop at an abandoned school to look for supplies. As they enter, they learn it has been transformed into a home for the poachers from last night. Nate lays Meredith down and begins to treat her wound with alcohol. He bandages her up and wraps it with cloth. Nate then tells the girls to stay put as he goes outside to look for water. He enters a nearby building and doesn't notice as the lion lurks outside the window. In the school, the girls see the animal as it walks near the entrance. They stay quiet and walk to a back room, but it spots them and roars. Nate hears them scream and charges the lion, firing his gun until he runs out of ammo. He buys some time and they quickly walk into another classroom and shut the door. Finally, he tells his daughters that the lion isn't going to stop and he needs to go face it. They protest this idea but he tells them to trust him and they embrace. Nate heads outside and charges the lions with two knives. He screams at it and throws one knife but misses. He then lures it away from the girls and outside into open land. The beast attacks and he turns and stabs it in the chest. Nate is taken down and bit repeatedly, but he manages to keep punching and kicking the lion. He tries to run but is tackled again and is bitten in the chest and leg. As he is dragged around violently, the friendly lion pride from the reserve takes notice. Nate stabs the killer lion again but he is gravely injured and can't fight much longer. As the lion goes to finish him, the friendly pride springs into action and attacks it. They surround him and fight as Nate crawls away to a branch. He watches as they exchange blows in the distance, and suddenly he hears a car arrive. Nate hears Banji's voice and then there are several shots fired from a tranquilizer gun. Banji tells him he is safe and the screen fades to black as Nate passes out. We flash forward to a hospital where he awakes and finds his daughters. They hold hands and tell him Banji and other reservation workers found them and the killer lion is dead. Months later, the family returns to the reservation to take a photo under the tree where their mother was photographed. They have put behind their differences and found closure and are now a happy family.